The Signal Oil Program, The Whistler. That whistle is your signal for the Signal Oil Program, The Whistler. I'm the whistler, and I know many things, for I walk by night. I know many strange tales hidden in the hearts of men and women who have stepped into the shadows. Yes, I know the nameless terrors of which they dare not speak. Yes, friends, it's time for the Signal Oil program, The Whistler, rated by independent research the most popular West Coast program in radio history. And Signal gasoline is tops, too. Tops in quality. It takes extra quality, you know, to give you extra mileage. And Signal is the famous go-farther gasoline. So look for the Signal circle sign in yellow and black that identifies friendly, dealer-owned Signal service stations from Canada to Mexico. And now the Whistler's strange story. Hasty conclusion. Professor Wagner sat in his office in the old brick chemistry building, a late issue of the chemistry journal open on the desk before him. The drowsy afternoon sounds of the campus and the reassuring tick of his secretary's typewriter made him sleepy, unable to concentrate on his reading. The article was in fine print, and the professor found himself tempted to drop it into the wastebasket, but he was forced to continue reading. When the dean published, the rest of the department was expected to read it. Suddenly, he turned back the pages and reread the article more carefully, his mind shuttling between memory and suspicion. Why was all this so familiar? Could it be what he suspected? His secretary, with her spinster's efficiency, would know. Very interesting. Very. Oh, uh, Miss Rhodes. Yes, Professor Wagner? Did you type this latest article of Dean Emerson's? Why, yes. Good, isn't it? He's had much favorable comment. Hmm, the subject interests me. Didn't it seem familiar to you? Yes, it did. I remember thinking so when I typed it. Any idea where you might have read it before? Why, some thesis notes. Uh, one of the students. That's it, of course. Nielsen's notes. Nielsen? Oh, oh, yes, the graduate student. Where are they, Miss Rose? In the files. I remember you particularly wanted them saved. Get them. Oh, this is too good to be true. Let me see. Lloyd Nielsen. Poor man, such a tragedy. So young to be taken like that. Yes, 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 yes. Very unfortunate. Are they there? Yes, here they are. Oh, all that research and never to finish it. It doesn't seem right. I'll take them, please. Mm hmm. Uh mm huh. -hmm. Now let's see the Dean's article. Here. Yes. Yes, identical. I thought this was better than his usual dribble. Get him on the phone, Miss Rose. But he's lunching at the faculty club. Call him there. Tell him I want to see him at 3 o'clock. But, but he's... He, he's... if there's any question, tell him it's about the late Mr. Nielsen. I'm uh, pleased that you like my paper, Wagner. An important contribution, Dean Emerson. You have every reason to be proud. I'm glad of any prestige I may bring to the college. And rightly so. The next dean will have quite a position to maintain. And that's not immediate. I have many more good years. Still, there's always the unforeseen. The little mistakes that can end a career so untimely. Wagner, what's on your mind? A student named Nielsen. Lloyd Nielsen. Uh, uh, uh Nielsen? The name means something to you? Um, uh, no, no. Oh, surely you remember him, the one who died? I, we've had so many students. Not like him. He did a brilliant piece of research, something about the valence of barium. Oh, I, I recall it vaguely. Too bad he didn't finish. He did. 
His findings have been published. But that's impossible. How could he? Uh, uh, come, come, Emerson. I just told you I read your paper. What are you suggesting? You stole Nielsen's material and published it as your own. You can't mean that. You have no proof. In my files, there's another version of those notes. Enough to prove you're a plagiarist, a thief. You're lying. There are no other notes. Oh, yes, there are. You forget Nielsen was my student, too. It, it must have been a mistake, a, a coincidence. If the papers had been in your own field, toxicology, yes. But they weren't, Emerson. You've never liked me, Wagner. This is nothing but malice. Uh, call it ethics. And you want to expose me for the sake of your ethics. Oh, then you admit there's something to expose. Well, I, I, I mean, uh, Wagner, isn't there some way we can settle this quietly? Uh, that's better. May I smoke? Oh, uh, uh, yes, uh, well, certainly. Have one of mine. Thank you. Yes, Emerson. There is a way. Quiet, but honorable, of course. Anything. Naturally, uh, for the good of the college, I'll have to ask you to withdraw. Withdraw? But I'll be fair. I'll keep the reason to myself. Generous of you. I think so. But to give up my whole career... You don't know what you're asking. Better than having the truth come out. Wagner, for heaven's sake, must it be this way? Just what you would do in my place, isn't it? I see. And I have no choice but to resign. Very wise. I suppose I should thank you. Well, uh, there's a way to show your gratitude. As chairman of the appointments board, you can name your successor. My successor? Do you mean that yes. you... I'll expect to replace you as dean. So that's your ethics. Why, you... I won't do it. Oh, you're suddenly very scrupulous. You contempt... Get out of my office. Very well. Then the truth will have to be known. I'll deny it. I'll discredit you. All right, a scandal, if you like. Get out of here. You'll hear from me later, Emerson. Oh, no, wait, Wagner. I'll come back. I'll do as you say. Anything to... <laughs> I thought you'd see it my way. I want your resignation right away. Right away? Can't you give me some time? How much time? Well, a day or two anyway. So you can squirm out of it? No. I can't wait that long. But a few hours at least this evening. Come to dinner at my house tonight. Mrs. Emerson retires early, and we can talk about it afterwards. What time? 6.30. All right. 6.30. I'll have an answer for you then. There's only one possible answer. Good afternoon, Dean. Uh -huh. You're sure you won't have some coffee, Professor? Thank you, Mrs. Emerson. Nothing more. Marion, don't insist on coffee when I've told you I'm serving port. But everyone doesn't like port, Charles. You mean you don't? Well, that isn't what I meant at all. You're so irritable this evening, dear. Nothing of the sort. Well, it's always a sign when you're worried. Is something wrong? I've told you nothing's wrong, Marion. Drop it. Here you are, Professor. Rather good color, don't you think? Thank you. You're not having any? Oh, <laughs> <laughs> Not supposed to. Trouble with my eyes. Go ahead. Hmm. Very good. Very good indeed. Pleasant here in the summer house. If the dean enjoys dining out here. Although I feel it's still early in the season. There's a chill in the air. If you're cold, Marion, perhaps you wouldn't mind... Oh, of course. You two have business to talk over. If you're asleep when I leave, I'll see you Monday. Leave? Oh. Oh, yes, the ski club. I'd forgotten. I'll be going as soon as the professor and I finish. Well, I hope the snow is still good, Charles. Well, good night, Professor. Sorry to hurry you off, Mrs. Emerson. Oh, you're not. I want to get back to my detective story. So interesting. Now, I tell the dean he ought to write one. With his knowledge of toxicology, he must know many clever poisons that leave no trace. Marry him, for heaven's sake. Well, after all, they're only stories... No one behaves as they do in books, do they, Professor? Huh? Oh, I... I, I don't know. I... <laughs> oh, I mean, the victims are so stupid. If a man's your enemy, you don't blindly allow him to poison Will you. Will you go, Mary, and you rattle on and sure, on? Sure, Rose. I hate to have you drive to the ski club in this state. You are worried. I'm not worried, Marion. Besides, I'm driving up with Dr. Phillips. Oh, well, all right, dear. Well, good night, Professor. Good night. Well, Wagner, I've considered your demand. Have you? There's nothing else for me to do but to agree. 
Nothing else? I'll resign at once, and you'll be appointed dean. Nothing else, Emerson? No other way? What do you mean? Very clever of you. Getting me to dinner and then... I know what you've done. Done? I see it all now. You've poisoned me. What? There was poison in that wine. Poison? Well, you're mad. Your wife gave you away, didn't she? Oh. Wagner. Oh. Wagner, why are you doubled over like that? The pain. My stomach. Oh, you won't get away with it. Please, you listen to me, Wagner. Dr. Phillips, I'll get him. Cross the street. You can't tell him a story like that. I won't let you. Get away. No. Let me go. No, listen to me. I didn't let poison you. Let me go. You. Let me go, I say. I'll... Wagner, don't. Put down that decanter, Wagner! For a stunned moment, you stand there, and then suddenly find yourself running pell-mell down the gravel path toward the garden gate, doubled over, clutching at the burning pain in your stomach, knowing it's your life now, unless you can get across the street to the doctor's office before the poison strikes you down. A minute later, you stumble up the steps and burst into the doctor's office. Phillips acts quickly, efficiently. Mm. Pulse a shade fast, blood pressure up a bit. But that's probably due to excitement. You say the pain's gone now, huh? Yeah, yes, yes. Seemed to vanish the minute I got here. You've been nervous lately, working hard? Why, yes, uh, but... Putting in a lot of nights at the lamb? Well, there's the usual rush around exam time. Tell and... me... What did you have for dinner over at Emerson's? Let's see. Uh, uh, shrimp creole, avocado salad. <laughs> That's enough for me. Wagner, old boy, you can forget about poisoning. You've got yourself a case of gastritis, that's all. Oh, oh, I see. Uh, well, I've got to get back to Emerson. Emerson will wonder what will happen to me. Oh, he doesn't know? No, I, I didn't want to worry him. Said I was going into the house to phone. Well, I'll, I'll say goodnight, Doctor. Uh, thank you. Oh, I'm going to walk over with you. To Emerson's? Yes. Do you mind? No, 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 no. I was but... just on my way over when you came. Come on. Uh, but, but, well, the dean's rather busy. That's all right. He's expecting me at nine o'clock. Expecting you? Yes. After you, Wagner. <laughs> With the prologue of Hasty Conclusion, the Signal Oil Company presents another strange story by The Whistler. But now, two points that'll pay every driver to remember if you want to be sure you're getting the tops in quality when you buy gasoline. One, in gasoline, it takes extra quality to give you extra mileage, to go farther. And two, Signal is the famous go-farther gasoline. After all, the only way any gasoline can put more thrilling performance into your car is by helping your motor run more efficiently. And when your motor runs more efficiently, naturally you get better mileage. So mileage is really the best yardstick of gasoline quality. That's why we're so proud of Signal's good mileage. And it's why Signal says, when you buy gasoline for your car, to be sure you're getting the tops in quality, there are just two things to remember. One, in gasoline, it takes extra quality to go farther. And two, throughout the West, from Canada to Mexico, Signal is the famous go-farther gasoline. And now, back to the whistler. Professor Wagner, it's all changed, isn't it? Your discovery of Dean Emerson's plagiarism almost provided the means of settling yourself into a very comfortable spot. But it's anything but comfortable at the moment. As you stand at the Dean's front door with Dr. Phillips, your mind is racing wildly. You were foolish to believe immediately that the Dean had poisoned you. Foolish to run to Phillips so quickly. Now you're wondering what they're going to find out there in the summer house whether Dean Emerson is alive or dead, and what you will tell them. Oh, oh, hello, Doctor. Right on time. Charles ought to be through with... Why, Professor, I thought you were with Charles. Well, come in. I, uh, I had a slight pain. I went to Phillips to get something for it. Oh, I'm sorry. Are you and the Dean almost through? Why, uh, no, as a matter of fact, uh, there were a few more points we had... Oh, well, that's all right. We won't rush you. So kind of you to take Charles with you to the ski club, Doctor. 
You're driving Emerson to the ski club? Yes. Care to come along? No, 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 no. I couldn't. Uh, I have a, I have a busy weekend. I couldn't. Professor, you seem as nervous as Charles did. What got into you two? Well, nothing, nothing at all. Excuse me, I must get back to the dean. You go out the rear door, Wagner, into the quiet night. Your heart pounds, choking you in a surge of anxiety as you reach the green lattice building at the far edge of the lawn. At first, you see nothing in the dim lights of the summer house, and you're almost convinced that Emerson has recovered and walked away. Then your eyes focus on the sprawling shape at your feet, right where you left him. Emerson! Emerson, for heaven's sake! Emerson, please! <sighs> Yes, Wagner, dead. You knew he might be, yet you kneel there, stunned, numbly shaking him, totally unprepared, and then... They're coming out here, Wagner, out to the summer house. In half a minute, they'll find you with a body, and the whole college will cry murder. Then you see the square, protecting shape of the nearby garage. You gather a strength you'd forgotten in 20 years of desk work and quickly drag the body around into the shrubbery behind it. See my futures, Doctor. Yes, Marion, I'm glad you thought of it. Oh, Professor, isn't Charles out here? Uh, he went to the chemistry building to uh, to get a to get a copy of his article. Oh, how strange! There's a dozen copies in the house. You didn't like him to miss his engagements this way. That's all right, Marion. I'll tell you. I'll get a ride with Mason and leave my car here for the dean. He can drive up when he's ready. Well, I I'd rather Charles didn't drive over those mountain roads. He's been so nervous lately. Oh. Well, I guess I've got to wait for him. Too bad. Uh, uh, wait a minute, Doctor. There's no use in you doing that. Doing what? Delaying your trip this way. See here. Uh, why don't I drive the dean up in your car? Well, I thought of that, but you said you'd be busy. Oh, nonsense, nonsense. Uh, it's nothing very urgent. I don't like to leave Emerson in a spot like this. Besides, in view of what you said about my being overworked... You're perfectly right. The change would do you good. Well, that's it, then. My car's in the garage here. The dean is kind enough to rent me his garage. Here are the keys. This is very nice of you, Professor. Oh, no, not at all. Well, I'll see you to the door, Doctor. Thanks, man. Left my coat in the hall. It's a wild chance, Wagner, but you've got to take it. A possible way to dispose of that burden in the shrubbery behind the garage. There have been accidents before on that steep, snow-covered road that winds up to the ski lodge. Quickly, you drag the body around into the garage and force the awkward shape into the turtle back of the doctor's car. Then you hastily get behind the wheel and step on the starter. Charles, come back. Uh, no, I, I thought I'd pick him up at his office. Oh, well, he, here, I brought this bag. Oh, yes, 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 thank you. I forgot that. Oh, and his glasses, too. He left them on the dining table. Uh, I'll, I'll take them to well, him. I don't understand his forgetting them. Well, he can't read without them, and oh, perhaps I'd better drive over with you. Oh, there's no need for that. I'll take care of everything. You don't object to driving me to the office, Professor? Oh, I'm sorry. No, of course not. Well, thank you. He hasn't been here, Miss Rose. I'm sure. He rarely comes to the office at night. But uh, couldn't he have come in without your knowing it? Oh, no. I have these reports to finish by morning, and he gave me his key. Well, then he didn't mean to come here at all. I don't understand it. Uh, why don't you let me take you home, Mrs. Emerson? He's probably there by now. Well, I suppose there's nothing else to do, but I'll wait up for him. I, I want to be sure he's all right. <laughs> Quite a spot, isn't it, Wagner? Mrs. Emerson determined to see her husband and his body in the turtle back of the very car you're riding in. You've got to think of something. Some way to get rid of her. Convince her that the dean's all right. Then, as you pull up to a stop sign, you notice the lights of a drugstore at the corner, and you begin to see a way out. You pull over to the curb. Why are you stopping here, Professor? Uh, just had a thought. He may be at the faculty club. 
I'll go into this drugstore and phone. Oh, I'll go. Oh, I'll... no, no trouble. I'll only be a minute. Dean Emerson's residence. Is uh, Professor Wagner there? Why, he and Mrs. Emerson drove off just a few minutes ago. I see. I'm calling from the faculty club. The dean's just leaving here, and he wants Professor Wagner to meet him in front of his office as soon as he can. Well, I'll have Mrs. Emerson tell the professor when they return. Thank you. You drive Mrs. Emerson home, Wagner. And there the maid delivers the message you so cleverly planted over the phone. Mrs. Emerson's convinced now, and she retires, relieved that her husband is all right. Ten minutes after you leave her, you're on the highway, heading the doctor's car toward the mountains. The 60-mile trip is unchallenged until you near the ranger station at the foot of the dangerous two-mile grade. And then suddenly you remember. The ranger will make a check, and he's got to see two men in the car. You put on the brake and pull up at the side of the road. Get out and open the turtle back. And you drag the body up to the front seat. Then you get back in and prop him up beside you. Pull your hat down over his face. Nervous and trying to keep from trembling, you drive on until you're stopped by the ranger. Sorry. Can't let you go on, folks. We're in for a blizzard. But they're expecting us at the ski lodge. Well, I guess you can make it as far as the lodge, all right. But you're taking a chance of being snowed in. When we get a storm this late in the spring, it's usually a good one. <laughs> we'll, we'll take that chance. Okay. Sign the passenger check. Yeah, right here. All right. Other fellow will have to sign, too. Uh, uh, but, but he's asleep. Oh, sorry. Regulations. Yes, but, but he's had a hard day. I, <laughs> I hate to disturb him. Well, okay, you sign for him, huh? Yes, 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 yes. Thanks, thanks. All right, drive on. Take it easy. You drive another mile and a half through a trough of snow, looking for a break in the high white walls, some place where you can send the car over the edge. And then as you reach the narrowest part of the road, you see it. No barrier on the outside, and a sheer drop to the bottom of the ravine far below. You maneuver the car close to the edge and then open the door on your side and jump clear as the car with its grisly load plunges over the side. You stumble the rest of the way to the lodge, clawing at your face and tearing your clothes to create the final evidence for your accident story. The distance is farther than you remembered, and you drop with exhaustion as you reach the door and Phillips and Mason hear your faint knock and drag you into the lodge. And as they chafe your hands trying to thaw you out, you gasp your accident story. You watch their faces for a sign of suspicion, but there's nothing but sympathy. You're getting it across, Wagner. They're believing you. Couldn't see through the windshield. And suddenly I knew we were going over. I called to Emerson to jump. Steady, Wagner. Better lie down. But he didn't jump. He was too late. Come on now. Don't try to talk anymore. I think we better try to get Emerson. From that ravine. We're snowed in already. It'll take days. <laughs> it was all my fault. I shouldn't get have... that. Lie back and rest. <sighs> all right. Well, there you are. Now relax and don't worry. It was an accident. Nobody's going to blame you. Of course not. It was bound to happen on that road. It might have been any of us. You... You really think so? Of course. Now, for Pete's sake, relax. You need sleep. It's going to be all right, Wagner. You can count on us. Thanks. Thanks. The Whistler will return in just a moment with a strange ending to tonight's story. Meantime, a word about the something extra you get when you have your car lubricated at a dealer-owned signal service station. Instead of taking chances on memory, your signal dealer checks against Signal's factory-recommended chart, which shows every lubrication point on your car and the exact type of oil or grease it should have for long, trouble-free life. 
And then just to make doubly sure not a single part has been overlooked, your signal dealer checks each point again, which explains why we call it signal double-check lubrication. This is typical of the many little differences in signal service that can make such a big difference in the way your car runs. And the reason? Well, being in business for themselves, signal dealers naturally have more incentive to serve you better. And now back to the whistler. Well, Professor Wagner, you're safe now. Safe in bed where Mason and the doctor put you after hearing your story. They've assured you that no one will blame you for the accident. It was a dangerous road. The snow was blinding. You lost control of the doctor's car and jumped clear as it plunged into the steep ravine with Dean Emerson in it. No way they could know that he was already dead when he took that final plunge. You sink into the warm bed, exhausted from your strenuous nights, limp with relief. You drop off immediately and sleep heavily and undisturbed for several hours. Then suddenly you're wide awake, trying to recognize this room, this strange bed. You're fighting to clear your mind when it strikes again. A shattering stab of pain in your stomach. You find yourself doubled up in agony. The same knife-like pain you felt hours before in the summer house. Doctor. Doctor. Phillips. Wagner, what's the trouble? My stomach. That pain again. Like before. Pain. Pain. Hold on, I'll take a look. Take it easy now. Hurt when I press here? Oh, stop, stop! Yes, 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 there. Good Lord, man, it's your appendix. Appendix? You threw me off with that poison idea. Afraid I made a hasty conclusion. Hospital. Get me to a hospital. No time, too much snow. That's going to break in one minute. I've got to operate right now, Wagner, right here. You game? Yes, yes, hurry! What is it, Phyllis? His appendix. Got to work fast. Bad? Bad enough to kill him if I don't get to it right now. Stay with him, Mason. I'll get my instruments. Right. Good thing he drove up in my car. There's not a thing to work with here. Good Lord, Mason. Phyllis. What's the matter? What is it? Mason. My instruments. They're in the car. I'll go get them. Oh, you can't. My car's at the bottom of that ravine. He, he hasn't got a chance, Mason. Wagner hasn't got a chance. Let that whistle be your signal for the signal oil program, The Whistler, each Monday at 8. Brought to you by the Signal Oil Company, marketers of signal gasoline and motor oil and fine quality automotive accessories. Signal has asked me to remind you, this is Naval Reserve Week. Veterans of any branch of the service may keep their wartime rates by joining the peacetime Naval Reserve. Ask about it at your nearest Naval Reserve headquarters. Featured in tonight's story were Charles Halton and Norman Field. The Whistler was produced by George W. Allen with music by Wilbur Hatch, story by William Engvik, and was transmitted to our troops overseas by the Armed Forces Radio Service. This is Marvin Miller speaking for the Signal Oil Company. This is CBS, the Columbia Broadcasting System. <laughs>